This is uh, clip number seven. He calls for a moratorium on all new regulations, and he wants to repeal regulations. Um, now, regulations, you know, they say regulations are job killers, but the reality is that regu- most regulations actually increase the number of jobs. Right? If you tell a power plant that they've got to put scrubbers on their chimneys, Somebody's got to design those scrubbers. Somebody's got to manufacture those scrubbers. Somebody's got to install those scrubbers. Somebody has to clean those scrubbers. That's jobs, right? I mean, regulations actually, more often than not, increase jobs rather than decrease them. And they increase the, the, you know, the quality of life in our, in our country. We, we regulated the exhaust coming out of cars. So somebody had to design catalytic converters. Somebody had to manufacture them. Somebody has to service them uh, you know, regularly. And, and, and by the way, our air got cleaner. But all of that seems to be lost on this guy who is the shill, the front man for the billionaire family, the Koch family, who you know, inherited an oil empire from daddy and then added to that uh, you know, other dirty industries like manufacturing paper through Georgia Pacific, you know, which if you've ever been near a paper mill and just take a breath, whew. Um, so here is Scott Walker on saying, you know, we need to just let the billionaires poison us. It doesn't, it, you know, it doesn't matter. Here he is. As governor, I called for a moratorium on all new regulations. We can do the same in Washington, and then we can repeal all the other bad Obama regulations to get this economy going again. Next, we need to hey, repeal all those bad regulations. Like what? You mean like clean air, clean water? You know, it's, that's amazing. And, uh, by the way, we're waiting for the president to show up. And here's a pander, again, you know, uh, as I said, the, you know, Scott Walker's political career, in my opinion, exists in large part because of the largesse of the Koch brothers, who has inherited an oil, a fossil fuel uh, empire from daddy. And here is Scott Walker pandering to big oil. Here it is, clip number eight. Next, we need to put in place an all-the-above energy policy that says we're going to use the abundance of what God has given us here in America and on this continent. You know, that's right. We are an energy-rich country, and we can literally start refueling our economic recovery. We need a president who on day one will approve the Keystone Pipeline. Hey, because the Koch brothers own millions of acres of tar sands land up in Canada, don't you know? Yeah, man. And all of the above energy policy. Let's, let's, you know, this is, Sarah Palin would have done it dumber, right? She would, you know, drill baby drill, right? Scott Walker this guy is slick. I'm telling you, he is slick. He has, there's a very good chance he will be the next president of the United States. Having, having scoffed at Reagan back in 1979 and 1980 when he was you know, running for the, for the primary and uh, against George Herbert Walker Bush principally, and then, and then running for president, I thought, there's no way. Ronnie Reagan, everybody in America thought he was a joke. But he became president. Do not underestimate the power of organized money.